Perhaps the cost you for electricity varies depending on the time of the day. Maybe you have solar power. Imagine if you could adjust your can and minor parameters, such as the work mode, according to the time of day. Now you can. Now I'm going to put a link in the description below to this Substack article, so you can just follow along and copy and paste everything out of there. In this article, I will guide you through setting up a Python script and then scheduling it to run on both Linux and Windows. The first thing you need to do is install Python. If you're using Linux and it's probably already installed, otherwise you need to download Python from here. So I'll just copy and paste that. Now one thing I've noticed about the Python website is you click on this to download it, but you need your browser maximized or it doesn't seem to do the download. So I'll just let it download. You can see it appearing there. All right, I'll put it back over, put it back over to the side again. And that just appears in your downloads folder. So I'll just start that running. Now, make a special note that when it starts up, make sure you choose this option to add Python to your path. That just makes things much easier. So that appears straight away, so we'll click on that. And then I'll just go install now. Okay, um, at the end of the install, we're gonna get this option to disable the path length limit. I'll come back there once we've gotten to that point. Okay, so this is the disable path length limit, so we'll just click on that. And it's now all installed. Time for the code. I'm using Windows Sandbox and it doesn't come with any text editors, not even Notepad. So I'm gonna use the Python auto editor, which you can start from the command line. So I'm just gonna go right click run and then type in CMD to start my command line. And then I am, um, I'm gonna run this command here, which will start up the editor and edit this Avalon Python.control file. So Avalon Control, that's gonna be our Python program. Okay, and next thing we just gotta copy and paste all of this into that file. And then go File, Save. Okay, I'll quit out of that. Now if you're on Linux, um, you'll probably wanna make this an executable with using the change one plus X command because it'll just make it more convenient. Now we'll test the scripts. If you just run it, it'll output the command line parameter. So I'm just going to copy and paste this command and put it into my command prompt. And so it tells me the command, you know, I've got to put an IP address and then one of these commands. So that's good, you should get to that point. Um, the IP is the IP address of your ASIC miner. And then you've got various commands like version, summary, estats, pulls, reboot, etc. Um, when I want to run a command on my Avalon Nano 3S, I'll use a command like this. So it's if I just run that, that's going to send the version command to my Canon Avalon Nano 3S. So it should come back. And so it comes back and tells me what version of the CG miner and API and all sorts of other things on it. This is in standard JSON output, so if you have something else you want to use to process the JSON, you could. Although you can only obtain limited information about the ASIC through its web interface or the mobile app, the API provides a wealth of data. So I've got some more commands you can try here. So we'll run the summary command. And you can see it spits out all sorts of data. We can do the same with eStats, which spits out even more. And finally, the pulls command. Now, on the GUI, you can't really get any pull statistics, but when you run the pulls command from the CLI, it spits out lots of information about your um, pull and uh, all the different settings, like highest difficulty and things like that. I think you can guess what the reboot command does. Now, note all configuration changes take effect after you apply them, except when you change the pull configuration. Any changes to the pull configuration require a reboot of the ASIC to take effect. The next step is changing the ASIC miner config. At almost any point on the CLI, you can use minus H to get more help. For example, if you want to get help using the set command, you can just put minus H on the end. So we'll do this for an example. So it tells us we've got set commands for work mode, LED, and pull. And you can see the examples there. Let's take a look at one of these, work mode. This lets you vary the performance power consumption of the ASIC. Let's get some help on that option. So we just go set work mode and now we go minus H. 
So it tells me here that we can use a work mode of 0, 1, and 2. Now, so not all Avalon miners have 0, 1, and 2. Some only support 0 and 1. So depending on what model it is, you might not be able to use a higher number. The higher the number, the higher the forwards. Okay, so these examples of the output there. So for instance, if we want to drop the ASIC to using the lowest work mode, which is 0, we can simply set the work mode to 0. So let's still do that. So this will cause the power level to drop right off and the power consumption to drop right off. And we're basically wanting to come back and say that the command worked OK. We've success, we've changed the work mode. Let's change back to maximum performance. Uh, so once again, I'm just not making a note here that uh, on this model it's two, on some other models it might only go to one. So I tell it I want to change the maximum performance to two. Whoops, that didn't copy and paste. Let's try that again. And I get the following output, which tells me it managed to make the config go changed. Okay, so I managed to change the config. Um, I'll let you experiment some of the other options, like changing the LED colors or the pool configuration. Remember that, that if you change the pool configuration, you will have to use the reboot command for the change to take effect. Now that we have a way to change the ASIC minor parameters from the command line, we can combine them with a setter to automatically set the settings based off the time of the day. So we'll do this for Windows first of all. Now we're going to need to know the path for our Python executable and for our script. So we can do that by running the where Python command. Whoops. Let's try that again. Copy, paste. So that's the path of where that is. So we need to make a note of that. I'm going to leave it sitting there. We also need to know the full path of the Avalon control, control script that you previously saved. So we need to use this for an argument parameter later on. So we'll just run this command. So we'll say where is this script? All right, so now we've got the full path for the Python executable and the full path for the script. So next we need to click on the start button and type in task scheduler. There we go. And once it runs, we've got to click on create a basic task. I'll just wait for it to come up. There it goes. All right, create basic task. And I'm going to create a task to reduce the power consumption of my miner to work mode one. So I'm going to call it uh, lower power consumption. So maybe you might be doing this when your power gets expensive. And I'm going to set this to run every day. And I'm going to say make this run at 7 a.m. in the morning. And we'll make that run every day. And I'll make sure I'm keeping up track here. And then the action we're going to use is start a program. All right, so for the program name, we've got to put in the path of the Python executable that we recorded earlier. So I'll grab that. That's that one, the Python executable. And for the arguments, we need to fill in the path to the Avalon control script. So we'll grab that. And then we've got to put in any parameters that the script needs. So in this case, uh, my miner is 192.168.80.177. And I'm going to, whoops, stay there. I'm going to say set work mode 1. So that will cause it to reduce its um, power consumption. So I'll just click on next and finish. If we click on our task scheduler library, we will see my task appear there. So, and then you can create as many of these tasks if, as you want. So you can test this script straight away by just going right click run and that'll cause it to run. Now let's check out how to do this on Linux. The first thing we're going to do is note down the full path to the script we used. If we're not sure we can use this real path command, so we'll do that. So this is the full path to my script, so I'm actually just going to make a little copy of that because I'm going to need that in a second. And we're going to edit our cron tab. If you've never used a cron tab before, it's going to prompt you what editor to use. Because I've used it before, it just goes straight in. So cron tab is a number of parameters. And when they match, it runs a command. So minutes, hours, day of month, month, day of week. So minute will be 0, hour will be 7. So this will run at 7 a.m. And we'll use stars for the rest. Whoops. So it can run in any of these um, other ones. So it'll run, the script will run every morning at 7 a.m. So I'm going to tell it to run Python first of all. 
So that should be in your user bin Python directory. And I'm going to paste in that script. Then I then I just use that command that we tested before. So in this case, that's going to be my uh, Avalon Nano 3S. And I'm going to set it, tell it to set the work mode to two in this case. So maximum performance. And then you just save that off. And that's all there is to, to setting it up on. That's all there is to it to setting it up on Linux. Now you have a framework to automate changing the settings on your Canon Avalon ASIC miners. When you, you can make them increase the performance at the start of the day when the sun is shining or reduce their performance when electricity is expensive. Whatever unique situation needs.